the very first thing I said to you, I asked you was what? Good, what are you here for? Right, because there's a difference between a man and a woman who, who's living for something versus a man and a woman who's not living for something. Right, so I want you to study. Man, I wish I had the research up here, but there's research that proves that people who have a sense of purpose outlive people who don't have a sense of purpose. Right? I've shared this with you before, but if you had a brand new car and you sit that car in the garage for a year, do you know that car is not going to be as effective and as efficient as a car you put on the road? Because a car wasn't designed to do what? Sit. It erodes when it sits. Uh, you missed what I said. You think by using it, you damage it. No, you're really damaging it by not using it. You let gas just sit in the car for a year, you know what happens? You let oil just sit in the car, you know what happens? But that same oil that's in the car, that's moving and running, it's a different oil. That gas is being used, it's a different gas. And most of you are not where you want to be, not because you don't have the ability to be there, but you're not doing nothing. And every time you sit and waste and do nothing, you are eroding your success. You are eroding your abilities. You are eroding your gifts. But when you use them, I didn't start doing voiceover work. I didn't start doing videos. I started with a GD program. And in the GD program, I would give kids work. But before I gave them their work, I would do what? I would motivate them. I would mo I'm sorry, I went too far. Before I started motivating kids, I started reading personal development books. And then the books I started reading, I gave to them. And then I started motivating them from the books. And I went from teaching a GD class to coming to Michigan State and doing the advantage. And the advantage is where all my videos blew up. The guru story, that wasn't in a big auditorium like this. I don't know if y'all saw the guru story, but that wasn't, that was in a normal classroom. We didn't start here with all of y'all. We started with 30, 40 kids, but we started. And by starting, it turned into this. Your problem is you haven't started. Write down right now what you should have started that you didn't start. And remember what I said, don't give me a passive start. Give me an aggressive start. What haven't you started aggressively? Let me hear it real quick. Somebody be honest. What haven't you started aggressively? What have you started, but you haven't started aggressively? Let me hear it. Yes, ma'am. Say it again. Caring. I love it. Caring about everything. Go on, let's just be real. How many of y'all just real? Like, you're going through the motions, but like, you ain't really caring about what you're doing. Let me see your hand. Be honest. I love it. Thank you for being transparent. So we need to start with what? You need to care about what you're doing. Put something in it. Put some effort into it. Good. What else? What else have we been passive about? Yes, ma'am. Waking up at 4 a.m. Yep, most of us have been passive about waking up at 4 a.m. Absolutely. Why 4 a.m.? Mm. Write that down, even if you ain't ready. I need to start my day before I start my day. Some of y'all just waking up and starting the day. It just hit you. You coming right into the day. <laughs> like you right in the day. <laughs> like boom. <laughs> you, can, you ain't got time to get ready. I told my wife, I woke up at six o'clock this morning. I stayed up late last night, got up at three, but was like, okay. No, I got up at two something. That's what threw me off. I got up at two something, got up, did my thing. and was like, yo, I don't usually get up to three. This two something, I might be a little too early. You know what I'm saying? Went back to sleep, got up, it was six. I couldn't do the stuff that I normally do because I had to start to work at seven. So I wasn't even able to like go into my day. I didn't go in with prayer. I didn't work out. I didn't do the stuff that I do. I had to brush my teeth, take a shower. I had to get on in the beginning of the call. And then boom, we had the podcast right after two episodes back to back. Then after that, we went out to eat. Then I had to come back and do stuff. My whole day was ruined. My whole day was ruined. You understand what I'm saying? Then, then I messed up, hit a pothole, didn't even see the pothole. Now I got to stand in line at discount tire. I think I'm doing something by getting there at eight. Me and everybody else had the same idea. Am I, am I lying, Nikki? I get to eight o'clock in the morning. It's a line all the way. I'm like, everybody got the same idea? We all hit the same pothole? Was that a setup? We all right here. I'm talking about, I'm literally like, I'm, I'm at discount tire. It's like a football game. It was about 12 dudes that was discount tire. They all running, get zoom, zoom, zoom. They starting off with like 10 cars. I'm like, it's unbelievable. They're standing like, like we stood in line for about 10 minutes. Nobody even came to us because they was doing tires. I told Carl, I was like, yo, Carl, next lick, we open up a discount tire, bro. <laughs> this joker, they making bread, bro. They getting paid. It's 8 o'clock in the morning. It's about 40 cars outside. Then me and my wife just want to go pick up our car. I was like, yo, it's 6 o'clock. We got to go get our car. I get there at 6. It's a line inside. And it's cars. I said, what time you close? They said, when we finish the last car. I said, what time are you going to be finished with my car? They said, about an hour and a half. I'm like, I'm buying a discount tire. <laughs> Y'all busy at 8. 
in the morning. Y'all busy at 6 o'clock at night. I need a discount tire. Somebody getting paid this joint. Good, talk to me. What else are we passively doing? What else are we passively doing? Come on, talk to me. I need two more people to be honest. Good, starting a nonprofit. Good. How long have you been thinking about doing it? Three years now. So write down the thing that you said you was going to do that you haven't done yet. Write it down. And what I want you to do is I want you to write it down every day and talk to somebody about it every single day until you get tired of talking about what you said you was going to do. Don't, whatever, listen to me. Do me a favor. This is how life going to try to punk you. Life is going to tell you you've been talking about that too much. Shut up and don't say nothing else about it. My first book, which is still selling on the shelf. The Secret to Success is still selling. Matter of fact, somebody said the other day, this is crazy. There was a young lady who volunteered for us. I'm not lying. I thought she was lying. I don't know if you remember this, Valerie. I thought she was lying. She said, if you go online and try to buy that book, it's $69. I said, what? I'm about to start selling the few we got. <laughs> I said, $69. She said that there are people who are selling that book for $69 because you can't go to a bookstore and grab it. That was the first book I ever wrote. Guess how many years it took me from start to completion to do that book? 10 years. Took me 10 years, but you know what I never stopped doing? I never stopped telling people I was gonna write a book. And my homies would be like, yo, E, you said you was gonna finish that book five years ago. You said you gonna finish six years ago. You said you gonna finish seven years ago. You said you gonna finish eight years ago. And you know what that did? When they kept saying that, guess how I felt when they kept saying that? Got on my nerves. I said, one of these days, I'm gonna shut your mouth. One of these days, I'm gonna shut. So, so do me a favor, don't go. You embarrassed about it. You don't want nobody to know about it. Don't do that. Keep saying you're gonna do it so people can hold you accountable. Because one day it's gonna be the, come on, one day it's gonna be the, Good. One day it's going to be the We Lost to Dolly Parton is the number one book in audio book. Audio book still going. Guess what? That, we still getting money every month. We still getting a check every month off the audio book. People love. I be having kids all the time. I don't like to read. Okay, listen to the audio book. They're like, oh, the audio book. It was like a movie. We got the creaking on the floor. I'm walking up the stairs. You can hear the creak. The line, you can roar. You can hear when I was homeless, the leaves. I'm, so, I'm, I'm telling y'all, like, that sucker's so sweet, you can hear me wink. <laughs> they got that sucker so I go, wow, you can hear that joker. One of the best books, and we're still getting a check from it. But guess what? It took me 10 years. If I would have stopped at 8, we would have never got a check from it. If I would have stopped at 9, I would have never got a check from it. So don't let nobody fool you. Whatever it is you say you're going to do, just keep saying it out loud. Because one of these days, we're going to talk, and you're going to be like, yo, E, can you come speak for the nonprofit? I'm going to be, you finished it? For free. Just get a couple books. You know what I'm saying? Buy a couple books. <laughs> Give out to the kids. Now you hear what I'm saying. So, so do me a huge favor. Don't stop saying it. How long did it take me to get my first degree? 12 years. How long did it take? 12 years. How long did it take? What's the, what's the, what, what is the year that most people, if they don't get their degree, they stop? What year is the year? Because it's not four, but what's the year that if you're working on it and you don't get it, when do most people stop at what year? Year six is where most people quit. You should, you should write this down every day. This year is either going to be better for me or it's going to be worse for me. How many couples in the room? How many married couples in the room? You, th my marriage is either going to get better this year or it's going to get worse. My money is going to get better or it's going to get worse. My health is going to get better or my health is going to get worse. What I do today will determine whether it's going to be better or whether it's going to be worse. It will not be up to Trump. It will not be up to the Democrats. It will not be up to, to, to something that happens in Iran. It won't be up to the stock market. It's up to you. Okay, you guys want it to be better or worse? How much better? 10x better, baby, 10x. You don't want it to be a little better. You need to start thinking like this, okay? First, get rid of the little think and the old ideas and the middle class mentality, I'm going to go to work, I'm going to save some money, I'm going to put it in the bank, I'm going to give it to the man. What's the bank do? The bank doesn't even keep your money. They hate money. Cash is, it's trash. Cash is garbage, it's pieces of garbage paper. It is only useful when it is used, if you're taking notes. They didn't teach you this in school. This should have been taught basic, fifth grade, sixth grade, not in, not when in high school or college. Cash, this is a piece of paper, okay? It is a piece of paper, it's worthless. This is a piece of paper. This actually has more value. This piece of paper right here has more value than this piece of paper right here. Why? Because one person has this piece of paper. 2,000 people have this data. 
You understand? This piece of paper right here is useless though until it is used. How many of you were taught to save stuff? How many of you got sticky notes and you save them? You write, you write like 17 different things on one sticky note. I don't, I don't want to use the whole pad. I'm going to make this, I'm going to make this sticky pad last the rest of my life. Okay. You got to get rid of the little think folks. This little think is killing you. Let's find out if you got the little think. How many believe success is a mind game? Dude, this starts right here. You got to fix this. You got to get rid of, let's find out if you've been affected. Have you ever had somebody leave you and they thought when they left you that you wasn't going to make it? Send them a picture. Do a selfie. I want to check your stability today, okay? I want to check your emotional stability. Are your emotions stable? You don't have to have a perfect person to have a marriage. You don't have to have a perfect job to pay the bills. You can make it on broken pieces. Stop focusing on what you lost and start living on what you've got left. The key is what we do in our times of pain. Pain will change us. Heartache, loss, disappointments, they don't leave us the same. If you go through a divorce, a friend betrays you, eventually that will pass. You'll get through it, but you will be different. Now, how the pain changes you is up to you. I have learned that every blessing doesn't come to stay. Every relationship wasn't meant to last. Every friend is not going to be a lifelong friend. God will send people in your life for a season because you needed that at that time in your life. And if they walk away, don't stand there at the tomb of what used to be and cry over what was because if you'd have needed them for the future, they would have stayed. You can come out bitter or you can come out better. You can come out defeated, giving up on your dreams, or you can come out with a new passion, excited about the new opportunities in front of you. All of us experience pain. My challenge, don't just go through it, grow through it. That difficulty is an opportunity to get stronger, to develop character. Anybody can give up. Anybody can let it overwhelm you. But you know what that's doing? Wasting your pain. That pain is not there to stop you. It's there to prepare you, to increase you, to develop you. You need to be your own best ally, your own best friend. Don't be against yourself. If you don't love yourself, you can't love anybody else. Come on, some of you, your biggest problem right now is you don't like yourself. You cannot impose your will on me, so you can wish it, you can want it, but you can't make me be what I don't want to be. You have to always keep your heart prepared for rejection. Never get so comfortable in the lap of the applause of men that you actually believe it, because it is easy to love people when other people love them. The hardest time to love people is when everybody turns against them, and they're writing about them, and they're talking about them, and they're in the news, and they're in the paper, and they're everywhere. And that's why I exalt loyalty above everything else, because I appreciate most, not the people who are with me when people are with me. I appreciate people who are with me when everybody turns against me. And you knock on my door and say, I still love you. Now you got clout with me. Realize this, just because it's a chapter doesn't mean it's your whole story. So for me, I just understand that it's very important to embrace pain, to go through it, because I believe the foundation of all strength is pain. I've gotten rid of all my problems because I have a choice. Nobody wants to hang out with negative, dark, and dysfunctional people, including certain people in my family. I don't need no negative energy, homie. I want to wake up every day and smile. This is a softened generation, so if you have any mental toughness, any ability, if you have any fraction of self-discipline, the ability to not want to do it, but still do it. But if you can get through to doing things that you hate to do, on the other side is greatness. I'm training my mind and my body and my spirit so it's all one, so I can handle what life is gonna throw at me. Because the life I've lived, it throws a whole bunch at you. And if you're not physically and mentally prepared for that, you're just gonna crumble and you're good for nobody.
because on the other side of that is your growth. On the other side of that is strength. Even in going through pain, like I look at pain as a positive thing. I'm not talking about putting yourself through pain on purpose, but it's just like working out. You know, the only way you're gonna get strength in your life is if you go through that hard moment, that tough moment. Successful people know how to change with the times. They don't get stuck in a rut, doing the same thing, the same way, year after year. They're constantly evaluating where they are and what they're doing. They make adjustments so they can improve. Life is hard. It's tainted by malevolence and betrayal. That can make you bitter. You need a meaning to offset. Where's the meaning to be found? Not in rights, not in impulsive pleasure, but in responsibility. You take responsibility for yourself. If you're good at it, you can. You have some excess left over to take care of your damn family. Those are heavy burdens. You pick up the burdens and find that's meaningful. The best way to pick up the burden is to continually improve yourself. And that's where the meaning is to be found. And so that meaning is in the continual self-transcendence. That's letting your old self die and the new self be reborn. Just because something worked five years ago, doesn't mean it's still going to work today. We have to stay open for change. This is why many people don't have any enthusiasm. There's no freshness in their life. Every time an opportunity comes for change, for increase, because they're not used to it, they shrink back. They don't realize that's what's keeping them from going to the next level. Everything you imagine is a preview to a coming attraction. Once you understand that, it opens up a wide range of things and possibilities. Imagination is everything. It's the preview to life's coming attraction. That simply means everything that's in your imagination is a preview of a coming attraction that God has for you. That's why he puts it in your imagination. In the coming days, don't be surprised if God brings new opportunities across your path. You'll be tempted at first to play it safe. Think about all the reasons why you can't do it. You have a gift. You have something to offer. Don't use your God-given talents for the wrong purposes. As you continue to grow and develop, you will soon discover that last year's systems won't likely meet this year's needs. You see, one of the keys to success is flexibility. We must always be on the search for more effective methods to facilitate and accommodate new ideas. It's not too late to start right where you are. Some of you today, you just need some freshness in your life. Start stretching yourself. You have to stir up what God's put on the inside. If you don't have a dream, you're not really living, you're just existing. Just check the circle of your friends because the company you keep tells a whole lot about you. The people around you, the more time you spend with them, I don't care who you are, you're going to become like them. The friends in your life are shaping the future of your life. We're not talking about acquaintances. We're not talking about friends at work. We're talking about our circle of friends. A lot of people don't ever do the things they're capable of doing because they allow themselves to go along with the crowd, following the crowd. And they find themselves in relationships with people who are addicted to mediocrity and they allow their behavior to influence their behavior. Following the crowd. Many people don't do it because of the fact that they allow their lack of self-confidence to immobilize them. The older I get, the more and more I am convinced that people are borderline obsessed with what's next. I think it's important that you have a vision for your life, and I think it's important that you have an idea of where you're headed, but if you're not careful, you'll get so obsessed with what's next that you'll miss out on what is right now. If you're in college, everyone's like, where are you going to work? You work for a little while as a single person, everyone's like, when are you going to get married? You get married, everyone's like, when are you going to have kids? <laughs> I'm like, when are you going to shut up? <laughs> People are always pushing us into the next season. Because there is this notion and this idea that somehow the grass is green over the fence on the other side. But it takes a mature man of God to recognize the grass is not greener on the other side. The grass is simply green where you choose to water the grass. Some of you have been doing time on a deadbeat job. And every morning you have to make yourself get up out of the bed and go to work. Pull a smile on your face because you know you just serve in time. I don't care how bad it looks. I don't care what the circumstance is. Keep the faith. God has not forgotten you. Keep the faith. Just as God has divine connections lined up for you, people to encourage you, push you forward, He's also lined up people that will try to stop you discourage you, try to make you look bad. 
And if you don't understand this principle, you'll get discouraged. That opposition wasn't meant to stop you. It was meant to establish you. When you overcome, you will not only step into a new level of your destiny, but everyone around you will see the favor of God is on your life. Well, I think the things that are bad that happen in life can either teach you or break you. And you got to decide what you want them to do. I vote that you, you allow it to teach you. I, I, I vote that you learn from these people, that you learn how to forget about the past, that you learn how to ignore people that are negative, that you learn to control your vengeful ideas, and that you learn to move on into the future where you're going to meet better people and better times will be had. That's what I would recommend. Your miracle is never in what you lost. It is always in what you have left. And so when you start looking at what you have left, stop grieving over what you lost. Because if you needed it, you wouldn't have lost it. It, it might only be a pot of oil, but if it's left, the miracle's always in what's left. I'm not telling you to change your heart and your desire to help people. What I am trying to tell you is that your circle should not be full of people that are pulling you down. Your circle should be full of people that are pulling you up. Someone say, check your circle. You can't honor people further than you. You can't reach up. Instead, you're more comfortable with everyone at your level or beneath you because it feeds your ego that you need it. If you're the smartest person in your group, you need another group. Everything magic is challenging, but once you figure out the challenge and go for it, then the magic occurs. Let me tell you how magical people working together is. If two or three agree on a common purpose, nothing is impossible. Just try that on for your mental side. If two or three agree on a common purpose, nothing's impossible. Everybody's looking for a challenge. Here's what I teach. Here's the best challenge in the world. Let's go do it. Not you go do it. Let's go do it. If two or three of us decide on a common purpose to do it, nothing's impossible working together organized. When everybody's an independent, now it's a little more challenging. It's, it's challenging. You've got a variety. But that's what makes life the variety. Don't isolate yourself and think, well, I'm strong enough. I'm tough enough. I'm talented enough. Are you flying solo or do you have a community of faith? People flying with you, watching over you, encouraging you, inspiring you. Here's one of the powers of working together, shared testimonials. If I've got somebody new and you're there and I'm there, I give them my testimonial, you give your testimonial. Maybe what tips the scales in getting me a new person is not my testimonial, but my partner's testimonial, somebody I'm working with. Shared testimonials are so powerful. That's why working together is powerful. Now, working by yourself is okay. All this stuff is okay. Everybody needs to know, though, where are the advantages? You can be good by yourself, but you can't be great by yourself. You won't become all you were created to be without the right people around you. You can go 60%, but when you get in formation, when you have a family of faith blocking for you, praying for you, encouraging you, you'll go 40% further. Every time we come together, you're being refreshed, re-energized. It's like your batteries are being recharged. What the weak took out of you, God is putting back in you. You support what they're doing. You try and build a relationship with them. That's what you try and do. This part of this that we're, we're talking about, their competitiveness. Like if they want to maneuver and try and make you look bad and jump in the spotlight and try and get all the credit, let them do it. And everyone is going to see what they're doing. And they might not see it immediately, but they will eventually be found out. So do your best to support them. Do your best to help them. Do your best to build the relationship. Make the mission the most important thing, not the little politics that you're about to dive into and get involved in. Don't make that the primary thing. Make the primary thing accomplishing the mission. You quit in the past, no one cares. Unless you quit now. So get up, go find a new mission, and get after it, man. Get after it. I'm here. I said I was going to make it. I've been through hell, but I'm here. If you try to run somebody else's race, you're going to fail. You're going to lose. You're not going to make it to the finish line. You're going to tire and give up. 
you got to stop caring so much about the approval of others and living for their approval. And you've got to be who God made you to be. Every storm you have been through was never used to kill you. It was always used to push you. If you look back over your life, if you hadn't gone through that, you wouldn't have had this. If you hadn't gone through this, you wouldn't have had that. Keep on going, keep pushing and endure. And that's the message I'm gonna have for you today. I don't know what you're gonna see. I wish I could see into the future and tell you that everything's gonna be all right. I can't do that. The reality, the fact is, some of you are on a journey, but you want the journey to be completed right away. You want it to hurry up and happen. You want everything to just go well instantly, but that's not how life goes. The way life flows and the way it goes, I, I hate that rhymes and I wasn't even trying. But we gotta learn, we have to learn in life that you gotta learn how to endure. You can never achieve anything in life if you don't learn how to take a licking and keep on ticking. You gotta live when it's raining. You gotta live when the sun is shining. You gotta keep on going no matter what life might handle. I don't care how strong you are. I don't care how intelligent you are. I don't care how tough you are. I don't care how resourceful you are. Sooner or later, you will run into something for which you have not been rated. And when it is too much, when it is too much, that's when we really want other people to help us with the load. That's when we desperately want somebody to lift this up off of you. And most of the time, we reach out to them because we have pressure beyond our PSI. And when they disappoint us, it is not the agony of living without them. It is the agony of going back to a weight load I must bear alone. Everything starts with thought. So you must be wise and careful what you think about because that starts everything. You got to be wise and careful. Every day stand guard at the door of your mind and you decide what goes into your mental factory. Don't let anybody just dump anything they want to in your mental factory because you've got to live with the results. On the job, when you deal with certain types of pipes and certain types of hoses that have a PSI rating, it is the pounds per square inch how much pressure that thing can hold. And if you add more pressure than the PSI is on the object, boom, it will burst because of pressure. But some of you today, you've allowed your circumstances to push you down and convince you that it's too much, and it's never going to change. Now you're tempted to give up on what God's placed in your heart. But I'm asking you to dig your heels in and say, no, this is a new day. I will not give up on my dreams. I will not give up because somebody did me wrong. I will not give up because I tried and failed. I will not give up because it's taken longer than I thought. I've got a made up mind. I'm going to become everything God's created me to be. And I'm going to have everything God intended for me to have. There's got to be a relentlessness on the inside that says, no matter what happens, I refuse to quit. As long as God has given me breath to breathe, I'm going to keep pressing forward, pursuing my dreams, believing for his very best. Everything about your life that God has for you is always outside of your comfort zone. Your comfort zone has everything except your calling. It's the pain and it's the challenge that expands my capacity. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds because you know that the test in your faith is developing perseverance. There's a development process. Perseverance means my capacity got bigger. I can handle more. I, I love this little phrase. It says this. The definition of capacity is the ability to receive or to contain. Yet I actually believe the definition that you choose to believe for your life is going to be the thing that's going to cap your capacity. Your capacity grows the more you're able to release. It's releasing that gives you time for renovation. I'm challenging my capacity. Some of you in this room right now, the pain of releasing it is keeping you from growing your capacity. It's painful. 
it can feel like fire, but as the walls come down, your ability to contain and to receive more, it grows. Don't waste your pain. Someone say, don't waste your pain. So most people like to use that language. They don't want to commit themselves because commitment means, among many things, no excuse is acceptable. That's what it means, no excuse, that if you decided that you're gonna do this, if it becomes hard, then do it hard. If it's difficult, so what? If it's inconvenient, so what? See, a lot of people made a commitment to come here tonight, but they looked outside and said, it's rainy, the temperature dropped, it's cold outside, and they decide to give up on their commitment. And that's how people do about their dreams. They don't honor their commitment to themselves. Let me tell you what happens when you, when you don't keep your commitment. Number one, it begins to deplete your, your self-esteem and it erodes your self-image. It weakens your faith in yourself. You don't feel good when you don't keep your commitment. The other thing is that you begin to develop weak relationships with people. People begin to realize they can't depend upon you. They can't rely on you because you won't keep your word. You've established that kind of reputation. Just think, what would your life be like if you decided to keep your commitments? What will all of our lives be like if we decided to keep our commitments? That we decided to do the things that we said that we were going to do? That we wouldn't even speak it unless we were going to do it? If we decided just for a week, just see what your life can be like. Just let's do it for a commitment to make, make it a seven day commitment that I won't say I will do anything unless I'm going to do it. And find out what your life will be like. Let me tell you what, if you follow it through, if you keep your commitment to the commitment, at the end of the seven days, you'll feel strong and powerful. Because by honoring your commitment, each time that you do, that empowers you. Whatever discipline that is required, whatever it is that you must do. So I'm suggesting, number one, commit yourself to live in the present. I saw the movie, um, The Dead Port Society, Robin Williams, and it had a line in there, seize the moment. Many of us are not able to move forward and develop and manifest our greatness because we spend so much time looking back or worrying about the future. Seize the moment. See, you cannot go into the future and manifest your greatness when you have various things in your life that's blocking you. Let's look at how we can begin to keep our commitments. Remembering what Dr. Robert Anthony said about results. When you keep your commitments, you're able to produce some different kinds of results in your life. So how can we keep our commitments? And do we keep all commitments? No, we don't. You will not be at 100%. However, you will have a greater percentage rate of, of maintaining your commitments to yourself, whatever those things might be. If it's going into business, if it's, if it's changing a habit that you know that works against you, if it's overcoming self-destructive behavior, if it's retraining your thinking, if it's reinventing yourself, if it's trying to begin to design your relationship differently, all of us have the possibility by focusing and really harnessing our attention and concentrating on it, we really have available to us the power to honor our commitments in those particular areas. Make it priority. You would think that when God calls you towards your purpose or your destiny, everything would be liberated. Your finances, your friends, your circumstances would all come into harmonious agreement with the purpose of God in your life. You have to go bound. You have to go broke. You have to go nervous. You have to go scared. You have to go intimidated. You have to go crawling. You have to go vulnerable. You have to go stuttering. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm bound, but I'm going. Go bound. Stop waiting on everything to line up for you to go. Go bound, go broken, busted and disgusted. Go nervous, go scared to death. Go with your knees shaking and your teeth vibrating. But go, when God says go, go anyway. Go, 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 go. It may be winter in your life right now. Things are difficult. You don't see any growth. It's kind of dark and gloomy. The good news is spring is on its way. A brighter season is right around the corner. Your new season could start tomorrow. You could see things start to blossom in your life this coming week. Your strength comes back. You feel good once again. What happened? The season changed. It looked like it was dead. It looked like it was never work out, but you stepped in to a new season. I gotta tell you, there are gonna be times on the pursuit of your dream that you're gonna have to go 
a little extra. You know, you're going to have to go a little bit harder than maybe you have in the past or maybe that you're going right now. I think every now and then we need to be reminded of the greatness that is inside of us. Like, we need to be reminded of how much of an amazing person we are. Some of you have been convinced you're in a losing season right now because you feel very discombobulated on the inside. You're not so certain about certain things that are going on in your life right now. It is not a loss. In fact, it is a new level. It is actually you going deeper into the things of God to understand His heart at a level that you couldn't have before. It's all ready yours. The grace that you need to change is already yours. The grace that you need to go forward is already yours. The grace that you need to rise up is already yours. The grace that you need to do it in the face of adversity and uncertainty, it's already yours. What you are reaching for is already yours. Whatever that you want to do, whatever you want to begin to create and beginning to manifest your greatness and, and strengthening your level of commitment, and it's, it's really exercising your will, find something that you want to do on your goal, one action step, but make sure it stretches you, that it challenges you, but it's doable, that you can do it. This year, I decided that I was going to exercise. So I started out doing just 10 setups. I know I can do that and not get upset about it. So I start out small. Now I'm up to 50. But if I try to do 50 starting out, I wouldn't still be doing it. So I started doing it in manageable segments. Do that. And that, that strengthens your will. So my commitment now is strengthened and fortified by the activity of actually doing it. So now I can expand and build from there. And I started saving 5% of my money. Then I increased it to 10% then to 15%. So now I have disciplined myself to live off 75% of my income. I took discipline to do that, but I started watching how I was spending my money. I started keeping a law and following myself. So you want to begin to find something that is manageable, that you know that you can do. Inside of you, there is a, a natural inclination to lead, but we have been almost harnessed like a horse, where they have placed certain things in our lives that administer pain if we move it a line. They come by threat, they come by intimidation, they come by instilling fear in you if you do certain things, like losing your job if you resist something. They got these pressure points, like a horse. You know, you control a horse by pain. When you put that stirrup in that horse's mouth, you know, that bridle, that hurts the horse. When you pull it, it hurts the horse. So the horse turns to stop the hurt. That means you're not controlling the horse. The horse is responding to pain. And that's what they've done with humans. They, the culture has put a bridle in your life, which tells you, don't go in that direction. We will give you pain. My hope, you will by yourself spit the bridle out. That you will regain your natural stallion spirit. Anybody feel that in the mind? That's what I want to see. I want people to, to capture themselves and say, wow, this is me. That's a struggle we have to deal with. The next thing in beginning to, to keep your commitments to yourself, have some friends that will hold you accountable, that won't let you off the hook, that won't tolerate anything less than the best from you. People that will support you in this new way of being, in this new state of consciousness. The other thing is that important is have a contingency plan. See, many times when you make a commitment to do something, there are some other variables that will happen that you can't control or you perhaps did not think about. So you want to have some other plans going on. You want to become creative. See, most people don't keep their commitments because when something goes wrong, they just stop. They don't have a contingency plan. 
So they don't know what to do next. Start being creative. If you challenge yourself, many times they say, I don't know what to do. And I always ask myself, but if you did know what to do less, what will it be? That activates another part of my mind. I start thinking about the possibilities and just experiment. But many, many of us just stop dead in our tracks. I don't know what to do. You do know what to do. You've got genius in you. Challenge yourself, push yourself, make yourself come up with something. Use your imagination. And what you will find is that you know more than you realize that you know. That you're more creative and more resourceful than you realize that you are. And as you do that, the more you do it, the easier it will become. At first, it's going to be a struggle. And after you get into a certain level of consciousness, you will ask yourself, I, how is it that I didn't see this before? At the level that I'm managing my business now, they say consciousness is what we are. I literally look at myself and say, how is it that I didn't do this before? Why is it that I couldn't see this before? And the reason that I didn't see it before, because I didn't challenge myself. I didn't put myself out here. See, the reason that most of us go through life never discovering our true greatness, literally walking, breathing corpses, the uncommitted life isn't worth living. Why? Because it doesn't produce anything. See, you only make things happen, your life only counts, you only make a difference when you are committed, when you make a commitment with your life. That's the people that make a commitment with their lives, the people that make a commitment to their customers, the people that make a commitment to their families, to their relationships, are the people that make the greatest impact in life. What is commitment? Commitment is the salesman who says, look here, I'm going to make a thousand dollars today and I'm not going home. You can turn the lights out, the janitors could be here running the vacuum cleaner, I'm not leaving here till I do it. I used to be a door-to-door -door salesman. I had X number of TVs. I had a minimum amount that I knew I had to sell every day in order to provide for my mother who was ill at the time, who had lost her job at the M&M cafeteria because of arthritis. And I said, I'm going to go door-to-door. -door. And sometimes I would not come home until one o'clock at night, knocking on people's door, people closing. What do you want? Would you like to buy a nice working month's television set, no money down? No. What about an Emerson TV? No. Thank you very much. Do you know anybody else that would be interested? No. Thank you very kindly. Knock on another, hello. Would you like to buy a nice working television set, no money down? No, get away from our door. Thank you very kindly. Do you know anybody else would be? Yeah, my cousin, he lives two doors down. Thank you very kindly. I tell him you sent me. When I had your cousin told me that you wanted to buy a television set, told me to come in and talk to you, got a special discount for you. Yes, come in, I'm interested. I would just keep right on. I would not go home until I did. It's an interesting thing, ladies and gentlemen, that when we put ourselves in a situation where we say we're going to do it, it, it puts you in another zone where the universe responds to you. When you have that kind of consciousness, see, the universe responds to the man or woman that refuses to be denied because that is your commitment. That business that you want, that book you want to write, that dream that you have, of controlling your destiny. That is yours, that power to create that and to manifest that, that is yours. That's available to you, but you've got to be willing to stand there and face disappointment, not have support. Be lonely, doubt yourself sometimes. Be rejected again and again and again. Become bankrupt if necessary, again and again and again, and refuse to turn around until life gives it up.